Ventures Young Berbahagia Datu CM Vikneshwaran, Chief Executive of HRDF to explain more about fourth industrial revolution in Malaysia. Good morning Datu. Good morning. Okay Datu, lately everyone is talking about Industry 4.0 and Big Data Analytics but many aren't exactly sure what is it and how does HRDF define it and from which perspective will it be beneficial for us in Malaysia? I think if you talk about Industry 4.0, we need to know uh, the basics of Industry Revolution. So in uh, early, early 1700s, uh, the mid-1700s, uh, where production was uh, run and uh, it was very human-based. And at that point of time, I think what they did was they started using steam engines uh, into production. That was the first Industry Revolution. The second was uh, the use of electricity to run your production. That was the second Industry Revolution. In the 1960s, uh, they started introducing computers into production. So, uh, so it became uh, the third Industry Revolution. And the fourth Industry Revolution currently what's happening now is the combination of all uh, different types of uh, advances in the technology put into one place and it is being done. So uh, again, uh, what it really means is to produce products more effectively and more in a better way. So in the fourth industrial revolution, what we are looking at is a total uh, revamp of how the whole uh, industry will work. So assuming that you're going to buy a car now, so usually what you will do, you will go to a showroom, you will see a car, physical car there. Then you will try to test it drive, then you will look at it, then they will decide whether you want to buy it or not. Then once you decide, then your salesperson will put in order, then you get your car, something like that. So in the fourth industrial revolution, uh, when it goes on a full bloom, like when it goes on a full, full scale, so you will walk into a showroom, you will have a virtual car in front of you. You see a car, then what you can do is you can customize whatever you want to do with the car. So you can choose what color you're steering, what color is a gear knob, what color is a seat and stuff like that. So everything when you do that, uh, it will be sent to the factory to manufacture the car. So what happens in the factory is uh, the production line will actually uh, customize things for you one person. So in the older way, what happens is you put up a, a long production line, they will produce one kind of a car they will fit everything one kind of car. That means uh, one, one row of uh, black color cars, all the black color cars will be kept coming out and they will fix it and they send it out. But in this Ford Industrial Revolution, you can mix match things and it will be customized to you. So in the production line, what happens is, now you have uh, received all the information, you start doing the thing. And uh, assuming that you are actually building a gear knob, like, simple example, you're building a gear knob, the machine is running and uh, the information is fed to the machine and uh, the machine actually cuts out the gear knob for you. So when it's cutting out the gear knob, assuming the parts in the machine is getting worn, like, that means you can see some vibra additional vibration in the machine which might uh, deter the quality of the product. Uh, that information will be sent out to another machine behind it where it will produce a part for this machine and it will alert the technician please replace this particular part. So we are talking about total revamp on how manufacturing and services is going to be delivered to people out there. So when we talk about this, all these things happening, what, you're go what is going to happen is in a factory, typically you might need 100 people to run one line and it will be now reduced to almost 30, 30 people or 40 people only needed to be run one line because everything is automated everything you just need to monitor the machines they are working auto properly and uh, and uh, the calibrations are right so the input becomes very important and what happens is the output it's, it's actually done so you have all these things done in an automated way where less people will be needed to do the jobs number one number two uh, last time you can have a lot of operators who don't have any kind of skill that means you just need to be good in hand and eyes only so uh, just say I'm doing a shouldering of a certain parts uh, in the typical manufacturing line before this you, one person will be doing the shouldering then another person will check the quality then they will send it out so now the machine will do the shouldering so the operator who do the shouldering is no more needed ready so we now what we want to do we are telling the companies uh, don't fire these operators what you need to do is upgrade them so they can have the skill to operate the machine uh, so they are no more doing the physical shouldering or whatever necessary on the part so they just go out they look at the machine then they calibrate the machine they let the, the to operate the machine so those kind of upgrading skills that's what we are doing now so we are concentrating on the manufacturing and the IR 4.0 is going to affect a lot on the manufacturing areas. So we are concentrating on that part first for the time being. So Dato, 
while HRDF is empowered to upskill, uh, reskill, and multi-skill their local employees in our context on IR 4.0 and BDA. Uh, what role can the fund play in ensuring employers uh, or directors of SMEs have sufficient knowledge? So uh, uh, there's two scope to it. So one is of course, like what you say, upskilling, reskilling, and multi-skilling the workers. That's that's our main role. But at the same time, we are trying to bring in awareness to the SME owners, telling that this kind of uh, environment is looming, is coming in, and sooner or later it is going to affect the business. How this, how the business is going to be run for an SME. Assuming I'm I'm uh, working in a, a very traditional way, where it's very labour intensive, and uh, I have all that I mean few thousand workers working for me uh, doing the job. Uh, so I find it because the labour is cheap. So I can get business orders from overseas. That's the common thing, lah. So uh, and uh, rejection rate is actually maybe thirty percent or twenty percent rejection or ten percent rejection rate. So I have this rejection rate when companies accept it. Assuming you automate all these things, just say uh, another country actually employs this four point oh technology in their environment, and they can guarantee you that there is zero defect. Because one of the aim of industry four point oh is zero defect. So just say the guy can assure you that every product that comes out from the factory is going to have zero defect, and at the same time, he once he puts in, he don't need a thousand workers. He can do it with two hundred or three hundred workers, which makes him much more competitive than the companies in Malaysia. Businesses will automatically go there. So we are trying to create this awareness. Uh, a lot of people always uh, say that uh, when when I talk to uh, people SME owners out there, they always uh, tell me that this thing will not hit Malaysia very soon, and they say it's very futuristic and uh, it's it's actually uh, very very hard for it to come in and uh, and and stuff like that. But uh, what we are telling, maybe yes, maybe this year it won't be here, maybe next year it won't be there in Malaysia, but. Future is definitely looming, and this is definitely coming. We can see in the car technology is one of the places where can, we can see all these things happening. Your handphones uh, is becoming increasingly smaller. The chips are being done in a very minute scale. Imagine eh, when I spoke to uh, uh, one of the top uh, uh, thinkers uh, about manufacturing. So he was telling, you know, the information comes to uh, uh, a chip in a phone. So what happens is uh, you have all the Wi-Fi or, or giga, giga net uh, technology comes to the phone. It comes inside, then it uses copper to go into the chip. So they say that delays communication. So what they are trying to do is they are trying to put optics directly into your silicon chips, where information will not be delayed even a nanosecond. So that's the technology people are talking about. That's the research that people are doing now these days. So uh, if the, uh, the industry is going to move to that extent. Uh, that means uh, we in Malaysia have to be prepared uh, to do it. So we need to be abreast of all these technology changes out there. And uh, again, uh, we are going to be an SME. We're going to be a, a suppliers of uh, uh, parts that are going to be going to a big, bigger components. Uh, you need to have that technology built here, and at the same time, you need the skills to handle this technology. Uh, we are. I mean, I know a lot of companies in Malaysia actually supply to iPhone and. Uh, and and Samsung out there, so they they produce chips, they produce batteries and stuff like that. But over there in iPhone and uh, Samsung, they are pushing the tech, the, the technology edge to the maximum. So the Malaysian parts who are doing the parts and chips to these guys need to be equipped at the same level of skills that the guys need. So and ultimately, the SMEs will have to learn to play the catch-up game. Now they have to learn to do the uh, to move into that particular area. So, um, Dato, recently, Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Dato Sri Abdul Rahman Dalan, said that Malaysia could lose 65% of uh, jobs by 2027 due to the increasing use of technological advancement. Uh, how could the focus on IR 4.0 and BDA by HRDF help to ease the anticipated condition? I think what we are trying to do is again, uh, like the word you said just now, multi-skilling and reskilling. Eh? Assuming that I'm I, I am working in an environment where I need to do a job, uh, and uh, when technology comes in, my job might be redundant. So I, I might be misplaced. I might be placed. I mean, I might be replaced by a machine. Eh? So uh, what we are trying to do now is we are trying to again, uh, when we multi-skill people, when people come in, uh, when the inter what do you call when the uh, uh, what do you call the IR 4.0 kicks in, uh, then you will be prepared to do to be upgraded. That's what we are looking at. 
there's a lot of instances where I think retrenchment is going to be something of a norm because retrenchment usually in people's mind eh, retrenchment happens when there's an economic downturn people always think that way but now retrenchment is not going to happen because of uh, economic uh, downturn if you ask me it's going to be a norm thing because of the restructuring of skills in the industries uh, assuming you have a factory you have thousand people again industry 4.0 comes in automation everything kicks in uh, maybe 60 percent of the workforce will be jobless so what we are trying to do is by educating the business owners and also the workers we are trying to prepare them for that so we say that okay we can you comes in uh, like there's one company in Ipo we are actually helping the operators to be upgraded to assistant engineers so they can handle the machine so again the skills so that's what we are trying to do now so by pumping in some money into all this uh, BDA uh, what do you call uh, uh, IR 4.0 IPv6 all these uh, things we are hoping that Malaysians will be better equipped when the technology hits Malaysia what could be the most common misunderstanding uh, about IR 4.0 Okay, uh, the most common uh, misunderstanding about IR 4.0 is about uh, the differentiation between automation and it. So people think automation is IR 4.0. So actually automation is one part of IR 4.0 that's more than that into uh, IR 4.0. As I said, you need to have uh, what you call IoT, Internet of Things. Lah. So you, again, I go back to the example, eh. you have a machine. You automate the process, it is already automation ready, it's one part of IR 4.0. What in the IR 4.0, what needs to happen is that machine needs to communicate with another machine. So that machine needs to communicate with another machine and how other machines communicate back to this machine. But when people think there's an automation, they, they think they already done IR 4.0, but it's definitely much more bigger than that. Second fear that uh, a lot of SME owners have is uh, uh, it's too, too big of investment. So they think that if I'm going to uh, do something about IR 4.0, I have to change my machineries, it's going to cost a lot of money to me and stuff like that. So for that, what we are doing now is we work with PSDC, Penang Skills Development Center, and they have come out with some innovative ideas how to retrofit your old machines with the IR 4.0 technology. And uh, it's amazing that actually they you just need to pay additional 30,000 ringgit then they can fit in some modules into your old machine, retrofit into your old machine to be IR 4.0 capable machines. So we are also uh, trying to work with uh, this kind of environment where uh, we train people on how to retrofit the machines. Uh, so it will be IR 4.0 ready. So there's two fears here. Like one is the workers, the other one is the SME owners. Workers is fear being replaced, SME owners is fear be losing business. So uh, again, earlier, uh, what do you call like evaluation about their business, and how it is, IR 4.0 is going to affect them. When you do it earlier, when it comes to you, then you will be better prepared uh, to handle it. Uh, it's not like uh, you are sitting there, suddenly it hits you, then you cannot complain, you know, uh, uh, I didn't know where it came from and stuff like that. But nevertheless, what we are trying to do is we are trying to create awareness and train people on this. How competitive Malaysia plays uh, to win IR 4.0 and BDA race? I think uh, we are investing a lot of money into it. Uh, the MITI, MOSTI, MOHR, uh, Ministry of Higher Education, all these uh, ministries are uh, geared up uh, to actually tackle this problem out there. Uh, well, again, uh, there's a lot of awareness being done, there's a lot of industry engagement has been done. Uh, uh, a lot of, uh, we, have, we have spoken to a lot of industry captains, uh, big manufacturing companies, big technology companies out there to see what is there. In fact, uh, uh, we have spoke to the creator of uh, IR 4.0. Uh, in Germany, it, yeah, the whole IR 4.0 term actually coined by Germans. So if we, in fact, we spoke to them. Then we wanted to understand how better IR 4.0 comes in, and uh, and we are preparing the whole market for it. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you think Malaysia prepared to accept these changes? We must. In this industry, we must. <laughs> must. We must be prepared. If we are not prepared, then we'll be losing out. Some, uh, I think, the awareness level among the Indians is actually quite low. Uh, regarding this industry for you know, because we run a lot of trainings uh, sadly we don't see as many as Indians who are attending the training even for the upskilling and reskilling part of it so that that part is a bit worrying also on my part because uh, if you don't have the knowledge then you'll be left out and uh, you won't have a chance to participate in the industry for you know, when it hits us that's, that's one of the things uh, for the Indian business owners we see again we see there's a lot of feeling I get a feeling that they strongly believe that Industry 4.0 will not come to their 
uh, what do you call uh, will not come to their uh, businesses. Uh, uh, simple things like uh, okay, if, I'm, if I'm a lorry transport operator, uh, people think that maybe industry for Bono will not hit them. So if you look at uh, countries like uh, overseas countries like Japan and uh, and uh, UK, so they have implemented this GIT system where a product is being made in a uh, in another location in another factory then they bring it to the main factory and uh, they have this uh, again uh, this JIT just in time delivery system where exactly the point where the the the, the part is needed the part is transported at the exact time it reaches the factory at the exact point of time and assuming that you have a line of uh, different products happening, the product comes in specifically for product A, product B, and stuff. It's arranged and it is being done. So uh, for that, uh, again, the supply chain works all the way up to even the transport companies also. So they are retrofitted with the uh, uh, IoT machines, where what kind of products is going to come in there, then how it is going to be lo- downloaded and is going to be put it into the factory. And uh, things like autonomous driving is happening also. Assuming that uh, again, uh, there are a lot of people, Indian people, in in uh, in the transport business, business, and uh, when autonomous driving hits in, that means you don't have to have drivers uh, to drive the lorry. So they they have a plan where what happens is uh, uh, from point A they have a cluster of industry to point B they have another cluster of industry. They will select a time where the road is not being used too much, and the 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 lorries will automatically drive from point A to point B. It's already being tested uh, by a lot of uh, uh, car manufacturers, a lot of uh, truck manufacturers are already doing it and uh, it goes there. In fact, they have a, a point where the, the the vehicle says that it needs service. They have a service center where the vehicle will drive itself to the service center to get to be serviced. So uh, the, the, again, this is a small example how Industry 4.0 can affect the livelihood of SMEs out there. So uh, uh, what I'm trying to tell here is I think the Indian community at large uh, need to understand what are the challenges that might come from the industry 4.0 and how they can safeguard their businesses uh, from being hit badly by this industry 4.0. So hopefully uh, what we are trying to do is uh, again equip the workers and equip the owners, business owners to have the knowledge and also to have the awareness about IR 4.0. And uh, when it comes to us, we are prepared. Yes, that's about it. Okay. Thank you, Dato. Thank you for the quality time. Share with us more about our fourth industrial revolution in Malaysia. Thank, Thank you, you, Dato. Okay.